This is to kick it off. We put together this little video. We hope you like it. Yeah. Okay, get your slides ready. Very cool. So we wanted to hold out until the very beginning to show that off. Now we're going to put it on the network. We're going to put it on the big screen. And we're putting together a couple little AV stuff uh, packages so everybody can see it. Um, so hey, welcome to the new hotel. What do you guys think? Uh, an improvement, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I think this room is pretty pimp-tacular. Uh, is... I don't know what to make of this. Um, so we got a new hotel, we got a new network with 100 megabits. We got a new badge, new badge contests. Uh, we went away from electronic this year to the titanium. Uh, and you'll notice, it turns out that this is basically a key to a whole bunch of contests that are running right now that's tied into posters and the program and art and shirts and things on the network. And, we even have secret agents mixed in among you that have clues that you might have to end up interacting with. Um, we've got all kinds of cool shit going on. And the theme of spy versus spy is what it's all about. So you might actually have to observe sort of a dead drop. You might have to observe people interacting. You might have to sneak up to somebody and pass them a note, and they'll get some information back to you. So it's uh, pretty cool. But I'm going to let Lost sprinkle some more clues in during his talk. Um, there's over 50 mini games and contests going on right now, and we've got the most contests ever. Um, also, for the first time, I've always wanted to bring a server and plug it into the network and just give away all the media stuff that we've done over the years. All the past talks and presentations um, are online now. Uh, so I know you guys are going to DOS it, and it's going to get horribly wrecked and polluted. <laughs> but, uh, and I did something foolish. I, I accidentally left the upload feature turned on. So uh, if you guys want to upload anything, I, you know, I don't know what happened. And <laughs> that's at uh, the address 10.0.0.32, port 7000. And just you know, have fun with that. And then I just got noticed that uh, Dead Addict uh, happened to put up a server at wares.defcon.org, spelled with a Z, W-A-R-E-Z.defcon.org. He's got 1.5 terabytes of stuff. And, uh, so it's pretty cool. We're making the most out of our new network here. So what's really going on here is this is all a giant buildup for DEF CON 20, the 20th anniversary of DEF CON next year. So we're trying out a lot of stuff this year to beta test it. And if it breaks, we want it to break this year so we can fix it for next year. Because next year, we're going to go just completely off the hook. And what do you think we could do with a stage like this? Realize, yeah. Oh, you're. You realize, Jeff just, <laughs> you realize Jeff just asked you to break things. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're on a build up for DEF CON 20 and we've got a lot of really cool stuff we're going to do. So don't be surprised if some of the stuff you come across this year um, is really going to be tied into next year. And maybe some of the clues you find this year are on a build up to help solve problems for next year. So we're really tying it into a whole lot of things and making it very integrated. Okay, so I'm not going to keep talking. I'm going to pass it off to Lost. Uh, he had a great time designing the badge this year to take a, a break, ha, 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 from doing the mystery challenge, which he announced yesterday is coming back for the 20th anniversary for 20 teams next year. Yeah. 
This year I have, uh, I have 10 spots for my uh, tamper evident context, and next year, it's the third year we're doing it, so next year we'll get to the maximum hardness level. We started easy, medium, next year will be hard, and we'll have 20 teams next year. So you can see this reoccurring theme. Uh, so there'll be plenty of ways for you guys to get involved next year. Okay, I want to pass it off to man, the legend, the man that needs no introduction, Mr. Lost. Yep. You guys are like way too quiet. Come on, make, make a little more noise. So I hope everyone's been having fun thus far. Wow, that spot is really bright. I can't like see anything. It's like when Billy Joel was yelling at, don't light the audience, anyway. So, hi, I'm Ryan, I'm lost. I was very uh, flattered when Jeff asked me to go ahead and do the badges this year. Uh, Joe Grand is a good friend of mine and uh, we've had many professional interactions as well as interactions through DEF CON and things like that. But I have a little bit of a paradox, is that we have this welcome to DEF CON intro talk where I'm supposed to talk about the badges that are concurrently running in a contest. So I've got clues and information that I really want to tell you, but I can't be blatant about it. And since we are doing the spy versus spy theme, I figured why not we do this like a professional briefing and I'll just redact stuff. So, I consider all of you to have exercised your rights in um, doing Freedom of Information Act and requesting information from me, and I have taken the liberty of redacting certain things throughout this talk. So you may or may not be able to glean more information and hints as we go through information. And please, don't be stone quiet. Make, make a little noise, for real. Come on. That, that's it? Because th this is DEF CON, and you guys, like, even at DEF CON 101, the noobs were like... <laughs> All right, so DC set the stage for me this year saying, let's do something different. Let's evolve. Let's progress. When we started doing the electronic badges, they weren't anywhere. Now they're everywhere. You go to a security conference, you go to other conferences, everybody's got electronic badges now. The Hack the Badge contest last year had approximately 30 official entries or so. How many people have you guys seen in the hallways working on the crypto thus far this year? Yeah. A lot, right? How many of you personally have done at least something involving the badges? Make some noise. Yeah. So that right there, I consider it a success. How many of you have had fun doing that thus far? Yeah. And how many of you want my head on a stick? Yeah. <laughs> So we decided to go with some exotic material, and I said, you know, Jeff, what about wood? What about titanium? At one point I was like, if we can get our hands on aerogel, what could we do with it? Yeah. Yeah. So my metal supply, we have actually are on our second uh, production group. Our first group actually gave us a quote, and uh, during the time between he gave us a quote per badge, uh, production cost, and the time we actually went and had a contract with them, the price of titanium had gone up in the country. And, and, the, and, and the amount of titanium in the whole country went down. Yeah, and so, and so the guy actually backed out of the contract, said, I just can't do it, I can't do it. So I had to go and hunt and find a new guy. And the new guy called around, and we actually, for DEF CON, have purchased pretty much, with give or take a little bit, all of the existing stock titanium that's in big flat sheets in the entire country. <laughs> and not that I'm telling you all to invest, but I think we may, as DEF CON, have affected the, stock, the market price of titanium <laughs> in the United States. We actually wanted to make more badges than we had this year, because I've heard we've sold out already. Is that true? That we're already out? We actually wanted to make more. We couldn't get any more raw material to make more. We literally, and we've, we made thousands more badges this year than last year. And we couldn't get any more stock, so we did the best we could for you guys. So. Are we releasing that number? Oh, total quantity is over 10,000. Total quantity is over 9,000. So. <laughs> no, over t it is over 10,000 badges this year. So a non-electronics badge equals a metagame that anyone can play. For those of you who haven't been paying attention or have been like in a hole or something, there are stages to this contest 
and each stage has multiple varying degrees of difficulty. Everything goes from easy to medium to, oh my God, how did they solve that? Because I never would have gotten that. And I have seen people out there who have already picked up on some things that I never in a million years would have thought anybody would have gotten just in a conference, like over a space of a couple days. You guys impress me every year. Give yourselves a hand because you guys are awesome. So I thought I would share with you some of the process I went through in developing just the badges themselves, which may glean some information for you guys, be kind of fun. So I decided to give you guys my design sketches. So this was one of the original design sketches, um, which um, was going to do a number and a cutout, and you see it was going to be a three-inch circle, and we had the little nub at the top. Consequently, the, uh, the prototype badge that sold last night at the summit sold for $450, I think. Is the person who bought it in here, actually? So anyway, is that him right over there? So a big, right a big hand to for for the the summit in raising money for EFF, guys. Seriously. Yeah. So so there's only two of those, and, and DT will have the other one. So so you guys that bought that, you know, you have like the secret pass. So this is an evolution of the design drawing. This was uh, went to version 1.0 and 2.0. Um, I actually decided to remove the little nub at the top because I thought it was more aesthetically pleasing to go to the circle. And I removed the DEF CON text because it just seemed the whole elegant, simple is better. I, I'm, I'm an engineer and a mathematician. I'm not an artist. But I wanted like a clean, pure look to it. And it's supposed to, to give the feeling of an old artifact or relic that's been passed through time. Hence the artificial... Uh, antiquing that we did to the titanium, which was not easy. Um, so here's, here's another design <laughs> sketch. I don't, I don't know if you can read that, the text at the bottom there. It says hippie crap. Um, it's, it, that's a little bit of a redaction there. Um, so the contest badge, I had to give props to my people. So my DEF CON roots really come from the contest area. My very, yay, the contest area, yay. <laughs> My very first DEF CON, I actually competed in a contest, and from that point forward, I've either run or been in a contest every single year. So you'll notice the giant pyramid logo on the floor when you walk into the conference. The contest badges are the only ones that are the same shape as that. It's kind of an homage to my people. So The press, the speaker, and the vendor badges were given a deliberate shape so that the goons could easily identify humans from other types of badges from a distance. That's why those are the same shape, or one of the reasons anyway. The goon badge, and you can see my wonderful artistic skills up there, that amorphous <laughs> blob. So these are some of my design notes for the goon badge. I really wanted the goons to feel, you know, Walker, Texas Rangery, um, <laughs> because they're going to be like in and amongst, like there's always this big thing about federal law enforcement versus like the local guys and the local cowboys and stuff like that. So. We wanted to kind of get that feeling in there for the game. So these are the concept sketches for the Uber badge. Now, this is what they actually look like, and I've got a picture that I'll put up in a minute. So these are just me, like, farting around going, you know, what are we, what are we going to make these look like? And I, I have an interesting anecdote from Jeff. So this is um, the original CAD drawings I did as a, uh, just a preliminary sketch, just to see if they'd work. And the, the design at the very top is what the prototype badge looked like with the nub and the key and the wrench, but I thought it was too reminiscent of the stuff that I did for Mystery Challenge, and I really didn't want this to be Mystery Challenge. I wanted it to be a new, completely separate thing. So there you can see some of those prototypes laying on a book with maybe a little bit of a hint there behind it. Ooh. <laughs> so we're just going to go by that one really fast. No, that was on purpose. So that's, a, that's what the, uh, the prototype badge looked like when we first got it. This pre-antiquing, where I was trying to score it, you can see on the right side the scratch marks. That's me sitting there with a, I've got a, a, a pen that's got a steel tip, and I'm sitting there scratching it. It's like, this is titanium, and I'm scratching it with steel. This is not working too well. <laughs> this is a fun story. So I called up Jeff. And we had this because we had moved to our second manufacturer. And they're a smaller shop, which is probably why they took on the, the job. And, and I don't think they'd ever done a job of this magnitude. We can't do this magnitude, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I called up Jeff, and I was like, Jeff, 
they say, they're saying that we can't pay them uh, via a particular means. Um, they want a wire transfer, which is unusual for what Jeff is used to dealing with. And I said, like, can we do that? And he's like, sure, you just got to get me the information. So I call up the guy, and he sends me all of their bank information and how to do the wire transfer, and I, and I got it in an email. So I call up Jeff, and I hadn't really read through it. And I'm on the phone with Jeff, and he's like, okay, I'm going to give you the information of their accounts. And I'm sitting there, and I start reading the account number. And in the middle of the account number is a 1057. And a minute I said, so Jeff, your account is blah, 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 1057. He goes, wait, wait a second, wait a second. Is this going into one of your covert accounts or something? <laughs> and I hadn't even noticed that 1057 was in there. For those of you who don't know, 1057, hacker handle, the other day. So anyway, that was, a, that was a really funny moment for me. I, I was like, man, Jeff's going to think I'm trying to scam him or something. <laughs> So for the fabrication process, we did a number of things to try and do this antique look on the titanium. And the first thing we did was we tried to oxidize them. We put them in a kiln. And the first time we did about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And they came out these really interesting colors. We didn't do any gases or anything, just put the straight material in. And they oxidized and got some really, this is pre-oxidation. They got some really interesting colors to them, but the titanium is so damn hard that the oxidation actually wiped off of them. So. <laughs> We built, these, we built these little rigs here to hang them on. So in between every badge is a little washer as a spacer. And we put them on these rods. And then these whole, this whole thing got shoved inside, inside like the oven. And you can see them hanging there. We couldn't figure out how to get that oxidation to take. And I started doing more research on it. And I'm not a metal fabrication person. Um, but apparently, if you flood different gases into uh, the, the kiln, when you're firing these things, they'll take on different colors and things like that. But we found if we scored the badges by putting them in a tumbler with really coarse material that would scratch the hell out of the front of the badge, it not only antiqued for us, deburred better, but it also took, uh, took the color better. So there's some, like mid-bake, we open the oven to, you can see they're kind of changing color a little bit. So there's some of the contest badges hanging there. So when you can see on the top two, those are, haven't been run through. The one in the middle has been through for about five minutes. And then the color on the bottom one is a deeper purple that I kind of liked. That's almost an hour in 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a shot of uh, the goon badges as we're doing production. Um, we, just, uh, we kept them in stacks. Uh, some of you may actually have artifacting on your badge from where those little washers were in between. The badges. I thought it looked kind of cool, so we left it. Um, I was really going for this antique look. Um, again, some humans. Uh, some of you may or may not have all of the numbers yet. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> what was that? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, <laughs> heavy-handed, right? There may or may not be post-its there with some numbers on them. Oh, okay. We'll go to the next slide. So, in the middle of production uh, is also when I started doing the blue hair thing. And this is like in the middle of dyeing my hair. This is like after the peroxide. So. You're trying to match your yeah. hair to the badge? <laughs> so, uh, somebody asked me that, actually. And I was like, I was intending to go blue and wanted to match the 1057 badge that you see here on the left. And it didn't get dark enough. So too bad for that. So um, I hear cameras snapping. That's why I'm pausing for a minute there. So the real rub, the math and the crypto. So I'm going to go through some of these a little faster and some a little slower because some of them are blatant hints and I don't want to dwell on them, so if you want to get out your cameras, right now is the time to do it. Okay, you've been warned. So this is a spreadsheet of some of my preliminary research that I've done. Uh, when I started uh, trying to figure out what I was gonna do with the math and the crypto, this is just, this is how I sketch and doodle in my head. This is what I do, <laughs> this kind of thing. I sit down with an Excel spreadsheet and like, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, here's another one. Uh, I did leave the note at the bottom that said, note, this assumes, and then, uh, yeah, you can see, redacted. I think I left the name of the file at the top, though. Oh, wait, hint. Again, another redaction. I left the of this, because, you know, I thought that would be fun to, to let you see that. <laughs> um, any math people in the audience? Yeah, yeah, so you get used to, you know, the whole N and, and A of N. So, anybody recognize these numbers? Yeah, this is the original spreadsheet I did of the ring. It is the, the, it is the, uh, the code wheel out in the middle of the floor. Yeah, the crypto wheel. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so Neo plus Lost plus late night video Skype equals the awesome wheel of DEF CON. So I don't know, those of you who know Neil, um, Neil actually works for DEF CON and does amazing art and has helped me immensely and I can't give him props more. He spent many, many nights late till 3, 4 in the morning on video Skype with me. In fact, uh, Nikita, his wife, has now accused us of having a bromance <laughs> be, be, because of this. So, okay. I can't, and, and I redacted some of these a while ago, so I can't even remember what I put on there. So, the blank with numbers for blah, blah, blah. There are only blah numbers. Never. <laughs> I just hear all the cameras snapping. So, I get this panicked call from Jeff one night, <laughs> and apparently someone had leaked a picture of one of the goon badges, which was this device. It turns out that the guy was a friend of Joe's, that they were just trying to punk me a little bit. <laughs> but nobody knew, none of the rest of the, the staff or anybody knew that at the time. So Jeff's like, D did something leak? Did you give out pictures that I didn't know about? And, and I said, no, Jeff, I swear, I didn't give pictures out to anybody. So I go online and I look at this and I was like, it's total bullshit. <laughs> and then being the, the very kind. The next thing we're like, well then what the fuck is it? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Jeff's like, do you know what it is? And I was like, it looks like some type of optic thing with yeah, like, like, a, like a alignment, a yeah. Like maybe a surveyor's tool or something. But the, the best part, because Jeff is such a kind, what, what is, is it? it? <laughs> <laughs> because the contest is so easy, right? <laughs> so Jeff being the kind and generous, loving person that he is, I said, Jeff, do you want me to like, go online and, and like smack this down? He's like, no, let's let him think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. So we've actually hired our own personal DEF CON spy. So I want to give him uh, professional credit. Uh, this is Johnny Mack. He actually has an IMDB entry under John McPhailin. He is a professional actor as well as an engineer and a good friend of mine. He is also an applications engineer formerly for Parallax and now for a company called EFX Tech. And he also works professionally in Hollywood doing special effects stuff for all kinds of people like Steve Wang who did the original Predator and stuff like that. So not only does he have awesome cred as an engineer and an actor, but um, now he has awesome cred of being a hired DEF CON spy. And some of you may have seen him in and throughout the conference. He, um, I, I'm greatly appreciative that I could get him to come. He actually came for no money and uh, is donating his time to, uh, to help make the conference good for us. So. Yeah. Consequently, he also writes a column for Nuts and Volts magazine every month and will be teaching a class in the Hardware Hacking Village. So it's a good opportunity if you want to come in there and learn some stuff. So, I will give a one design hint or fun thing that we tried to do. You will notice on your lanyards, if you stare down at your own lanyard, that the binary is written in such a way that it is just out of view of yourself. So if you look down at your own lanyard, you f almost forget that there's any binary or crypto on there. Because everything in the contest this year is designed to make you interact with other people and talk to other people and meet other people, make new friends, make new connections. So that was a very deliberate design choice to have you go, hey, I have this cool badge and I see Neil's awesome silhouette drawings, but uh, you don't notice, and I know a number of people it, have been working on other parts of the contest but haven't even realized, oh, wait a minute, there's actually binary on there. And so it, this is going to sound weird, but what I'm about to say is a hint. Um, you'll notice there is a seven in there, which is the first thing Major Malfunction said to me when he saw the language. He goes, he comes up to me and, he, and I don't know how many of you know Major, he has the, the great British accent and he comes up and he goes, fucking lost. <laughs> he goes, there's a seven on there. <laughs> and I said, yes, that's because I'm narcissistic. <laughs> So you may have noticed in your program, there's a, a few odds and ends and things that may look out of place and things that may look um, interesting. Any Chinese speakers out in the audience? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, one? <laughs> 
yet, how many of you are learning Chinese characters now? <laughs> so my question is, oh, here's a better question. How many of you, this conference, have learned at least one thing you didn't know in the process of studying for this badge contest? Yeah. yeah. So again, my job here is done. <laughs> you may have noticed some other interesting tidbits. Um, that right there is the very first concept sketch I did on graph paper, you can kind of see the blue lines on there, of the eye that is on the badge. And I scanned it and put it on. And uh, nice little quote there at the bottom. Please, above all, have fun. When I ran Mystery Challenge, it was designed, by design, to have a 50% failure rate. I wanted 50% of my teams that were in Mystery Challenge every year to pass, and it would be hard enough that 50% never made it through. The badge contest is not designed for failure. It's designed for fun and interaction. How many of you are familiar with the concept of Occam's razor? Make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, some of you didn't shave very closely this morning with Occam's razor. <laughs> this is not the mystery challenge, okay? It's designed to be fun. There will be hints that will start today. Today is the official kickoff of DEF CON. That's why not really a whole lot was given out yesterday. We have a Twitter feed, which is the 1057 Twitter feed that I will probably every two hours throw something out there. I've been walking the floor trying to gauge where everybody's at and will act accordingly. That's one of the benefits also I have of having a live actor here that can make the game fun, but also gives me a human whiteboard, if you will, to help pass hints to you guys in a manner that's enjoyable. So if you find yourself getting to the point where you're getting pissed off or angry because you are frustrated because, damn it, I can't figure out what the hell this means, talk to some other people, talk to me. It's not designed to frustrate this year. Mystery Challenge is occasionally designed to frustrate. This is not. I will tell you that I am giving style points this year <laughs> to people who find any of my various Easter eggs, and Jeff is aware of several of them. Some of them, I told Jeff, if anyone gets this particular egg, we should freaking give them either free DEF CON next year or something because it would be just amazing. Speaking of amazing, is the guy that got his badge tattooed on him here? Are you here? And I can't see because of the lights. Is he here? So last night at the summit, this guy comes up to me and he goes, dude, I got my badge tattooed on my arm. And I was like, no, you didn't. He pulls up his sleeve and it's like right here. He takes his badge and lays it and it is an exact match of his badge on his arm. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> I was like, you did not do that. Yeah, he's like, yes, I did. And I was like, wow, somebody has that forever. Yeah, it's like, get a picture. Yes, and we do have a picture of it, but I didn't have my camera, and I will get it online. So you may have noticed in the, on the, the DVD, there's a link to some places to download some of my content that uh, we didn't get onto the DVD in, in time because I'm a jerk and didn't get it to Neil in time. Um, I will get that picture and throw it up there so if anybody wants to see the guy that got the badge. And consequently, and I didn't know this until we were walking with Neil this morning, the same guy got uh, DEF CON art tattooed on him last year, uh, higher up on his arm, the art of Eddie Mize, those of you know who Eddie. And so apparently, and what I'm surmising, is that the dude's getting like a DEF CON tattoo once once every year to like commemorate. And so like, it's kind of a flattering thing for Jack. We have to come up with either a really cool or a really crappy badge for next year for him. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was just, I was floored at the fact that the, 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 this guy had tattooed the badge on him. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I think about that. I, I'm, I'm flattered, but please meet some new friends. You may have noticed, I believe for the first time, Jeff, the human badges are not all the same. That was done deliberately to make you go out, seek other people, talk to other people, have fun, and now you're not quite sure how many total badges there are. So what are you doing? Instead of doing this, when you walk down the hallways, you're looking at each other's badges. And I know the guys are staring at the girls' chests too. It's kind of an excuse. But, but no, um, it was designed to have you looking at other people's badges so that you're at least presenting yourself as a, like in a nice social way to get to know some other people. So you all inspire me. Um, the stuff that I do, I don't know why everyone enjoys it. I really don't. I'm not being humble or modest or anything like that. I really like, wow, they really like this stuff? And apparently they do because they kept coming back for Mystery Challenge. 
Jeff has graciously um, agreed, and we're going to bring back Mystery Challenge one last time. I swear it will be the last time for DEF CON 20. Oh, <laughs> do, you think, do you think Lost is like an addict? He's like a puzzle addict? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do I have, how many Mystery Challenge veterans are in the audience right now? Wow. How many, how many are repeat offenders? Yeah. Uh, how many of you guys, after doing the, the badge contest this year, are going to try and take out one of my Mystery Challenge slots next year? Yeah. Uh, all right, there you go. So I'm officially announcing, as Jeff said, there will be 20, 20 team slots available. We're going to start the prequel round, which is going to be multiple staged, almost six months prior to DEF CON. So it's going to be, uh, I have to turn away so many teams every year that it, it's going to be a little more fierce in terms of the competition for getting in for next year. Um, I will extend a golden ticket freebie pass to whoever the, uh, the first group or persons who solves the badge this year will have the choice of having that entrance into Mystery Challenge for next year. So. That's all I have for you guys. So we have some. So I want to do a for QA. Yeah. yeah. A so do we have time? Yeah. Yeah. We've got about five, ten minutes. So I left. I left some time for some QA. Can you take the house lights down a little bit? Because I really can't see any of them. <laughs> and I would like to see the people. Like, can can we take the house lights down? Yeah. Or are the, the the spots? Can you can. There, that's better. So let's, let's do a little QA. Like, do you guys have any questions about the badge? Oh, by the way, I do believe this is the first year that the badge itself weighs less than the lanyard. Yeah. So. It, it's, is this presentation posted anywhere? No, but I can put it up on that same DEF CON, um, that same location. We can put it on, our meet, on the, uh, the DEF CON file server. I'll put it on the DEF CON file server as well. Jeff said we can that, do that. That one I mentioned earlier, the 10.0.0.32. We'll put. You guys want the you guys want the redacted version, right? Yeah. No, they want to run the anti-redaction yeah. tools. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what you guys can get, and you know, see with Photoshop. Yeah. Put it no. Yeah. Multi-level PDF, please. I. This image was altered using the GIMP. <laughs> questions? No, seriously, you guys have to have some questions. Yeah. Square. Why, did, why DEF CON on the goon badges and not anywhere else? I did that because, how do I answer that without giving out information? Um, without <laughs> the, the human badges are designed to be something that was, that are a, a relic of the past that were passed forward as a means of covert communication. Uh, the goon badges are supposed to be like a law enforcement symbol. And honestly, it was kind of props also to the goons for the hard work that they do. And I liked the aesthetics, and I had DEF CON on the, the other badges. You saw those in my, in my prototypes. I just liked the clean, nice look. I mean, I, I study Asian languages, and when you, when you learn Chinese calligraphy, you learn about, you treat the character like a fish in a fishbowl, and it's got to have enough water to breathe, so to speak, in terms of the spacing to make it aesthetically pleasing. So I was kind of going for that clean, simple, not only that, but in terms of the puzzle, I wanted the badge to look as simple as possible so that you will dismiss other things just out of hand because it's so clean and simple. These other things can't possibly be complicated or used for anything. So it was also a means of deception, to be blunt. Anyone else? Yeah. You are great at social engineering, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he said his. Go ahead. He said that his badge has a defect, a little notch on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you, you must have a broken one. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> yeah. your, your badge doesn't have a notch. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So here's the question. You would have to find that guy and see if your numbers match, right? Oh. Yes, in the very back. How many hours of sleep do you get on average? <laughs> At DEF CON or how before? Many, how many hours of sleep do I get on average? This is not a joke. My average amount of sleep is about four hours a night. 
And for about two months up to DEF CON every year, Mr. Challenge badge, everything, it goes down to about three hours a night. Not a joke. He's a robot. Yeah. Um, poor Neil is like, dude, I'm going to bed. And when we're on Skype, and I'm like, no, we got to get this done. We got to do this. We got to do this. And the poor guy has all the, he has to do all the stuff uh, for Jeff. And I'm sitting there injecting into his workflow. And all the stuff I do is like, like quadruples his work because you know he's he did the program layout and I was like I got stuff for you <laughs> and he's like oh crap like what and I was like okay so I've got these little graphics can we just throw them on pages and and he's like yeah how many and I was like oh it's you know it's quite a few and it's not all of them <laughs> so, so he has been just amazing at uh, putting up with the, the strange requests oftentimes not even knowing why I'm asking things and he'll, he occasionally would inadvertently break something in terms of what I was trying to do with being like stealthy. But other times um, he actually would come up with some stuff that would help fix and make things better. So questions? Any more? A couple more. Yes? Let's ask the crowd, does the position of the defect have any significance? Yes. <laughs> really? Are you sure? I still don't know what these defects you guys are talking about. I think the badges are perfect. <laughs> couple more, couple more, quick. Okay, I, I, okay. Are you, go for it. Me, myself, or participants? The question. The question is: Is did I set up the contest so that I myself did not have to do anything actively at the con? That's a good question. For those of you who don't know, every time you do something this complicated, something inevitably will be broken, misaligned, moved, you have hotel staff involved, other people who don't know what's in, what things are set up for a particular reason, alignments, angles, whatever. I am constantly having to run around and check things just to make sure everything is running smoothly. Not only that, you throw on top of that that you got all you guys out there running around screwing with stuff. And, and stuff gets moved and altered. And honestly, this is a hacker con. Oh, I've seen people. Tell them about the signage. Uh, I've seen people do denial of service stuff to other people in, in contests before. And I fully expect to see that kind of thing happen as well. So tell them about the signage cutting off. Oh, so uh, by this point, you, most of you, if not all of you, have noticed on the leaderboards, there's some numbers at the bottom. So when I first got here, those were shoved down in those metal clippy things. And they were shoved down so far that those numbers were all hidden. And I went to Neil and I was like, at first I said, I just thought they weren't there. I was like, dude, you promised me those numbers were going to be on those signs. They have to be on those signs. And he goes, they're there. And I was like, no, they're not. So we went over to the sign. We lifted it out. And sure enough, they were there. But no one had told us that those holders actually covered part of the numbers. So we walked down the hall. And the one that's about midway down the main hallway, only half of the numbers were cut off. So it's, you know it's two lines. And I was like, dude, leave it. <laughs> I was like, there will be a single line. They'll get through half of it and be like, what the hell? You know? And I was like, so it'll force them to screw with the signs. And that's when all the rest of the goons are like, no. <laughs> we don't want them screwing with the signs. So they actually, I think they put little wedges underneath, lift those up. And on some of them, I think you still can't see the numbers. Is that correct? At the last, last I checked? Yeah. Also, uh, I've had the security guy say, please do not sit in the hallway while you're dying. He's like, I don't mind you sitting there copying the numbers down, but please don't sit in the hallway to actually try and work on the crypto. <laughs> so I guess we had people blocking the yeah, hallways. The, the other interesting thing is when we first came to the hotel and we saw that huge rotunda right at the very entrance and I saw the big circle in the dome, it's like something is going here. We don't know what's going here, but something is going here. And so uh, it's interesting to watch people. People don't really step on the artwork. Yeah, and it's like kind of reverent, like, ooh, I don't know. And how many of you have stood in the middle, the very center, and like done the whole echo effect? Like, that, yeah. yeah. If you haven't done that yet, do it at least once before you go. Go stand in the very, very center. And it's up and down the hallways, yeah, too. Yeah, anywhere there's those domes, and, like, and, a, and some of them are like whisper domes where you can whisper to somebody who's really far because it will actually project the sound. They're kind of neat. So if you're near one of those domes thinking you're having a secret conversation. <laughs> uh, like maybe two more questions. Anything like super awesome. 
I'm sorry? Did, did I break the Kino board? Um, I would like to tell the staff of the Rio that I have not affected the conference hall in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Can I, can, I, can I admit to having a desire to hack the Kino board? <laughs> of course. Anyone else? Oh, the 101. The, oh, the DEF CON 101 signs? I will release publicly there was nothing on the DEF CON 101 signs that you would need. Okay, last question and then we're out of here, guys. Have okay, let's, I've got a couple of announcements. Let's thank you. You should never believe anything I say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right on. <laughs> okay, I have two con related announcements. One is for some reason, I think maybe your fault, Hacker Jeopardy didn't get mentioned in the program because Neil was busy. Um, so yes, Hacker Jeopardy is happening this year as usual and uh, same bat time, same bat place sort of as last year and it will be on all the DEF CON updates and it's happening before or after, after the 10,000 cent pyramid. So if, so if you find your way into the 10,000 cent pyramid room, after that it becomes Hacker Jeopardy and uh, it's the same thing. It's on a build up for DEF CON 20 so they're trying out some stuff this year. Next year it's going to be extra double plus plus crazy. And the other thing is due to logistical issues, the Q&A rooms, each one of these sessions has a corresponding Q&A room. So a lot of times the speakers, if they have a lot of questions, will go to these Q&A rooms and then you can spend an extra 50 minutes hanging out more of one-on-one -on -one with the speakers. Those Q&A rooms are on your program but they've had to change. So they still exist. They're not exactly in the same order they were. So we'll be updating the signage in the hallways and everything just so you know they've changed uh, and it's, it's not a misprint, it's just that they had to change today for technical reasons. So that's it. We're going to wander around, try to misdirect you and have a really rocking time. So do you guys like the badges, really? Yeah. yeah. Right on. Do you want to uh, drop any hints about what to expect for next year? Um, so Jeff keeps alluding to this big build up for DEF CON 20. I will tell you, there Use are the there. There are pieces of this contest that will carry through until next year. And you might have to do stuff so in the time in between. Intermittently. So we're trying to re we're it may fail mis miserably the whole I'm going to show up on Reddit with you're doing it wrong printed across my face or something. Um, <laughs> how many Reddit folks out there? Yeah. Uh, so um, have fun. Please don't get to the point where you hate me enough to actually do me physical harm. <laughs> Come talk, come talk to me. It's meant to be fun. It's not meant to be so like painful that you're like, fuck, I don't know what to do next. So. Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>